Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Caitlin. I post on Instagram, YouTube, trying to get back on TikTok, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I am going to be doing a week of workouts for you guys. I've seen this done a few times, um, and it looks like a fun idea, so I'm gonna do that this week. Uh, it's actually Sunday right now, and I filmed my whole past week of workouts, so that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys. I'll be taking you guys through it, maybe adding in some tips and tricks along the way. So you'll see my full workout plan, what a full week of workouts looks like for me, um, which could be really, really cool, really helpful. Um, I do love working out, so I work out six times a week. Um, oh my God, my shoulder's getting tired. Um, I do take an extra rest day if needed, so I take one to two rest days a week. Right now with my split this past week, I took six uh workout days and one rest day so that's what you're gonna see if you're a beginner i highly recommend not <laughs> working out six days a week to start i would say like you know try for four to five days a week if you know it's something you really want to make a habit um and then go from there and see like how you're feeling how recovery is and stuff like that um but yeah i'm gonna show you guys my week of workouts and it's gonna be fun so i'll take you guys along and if i have anything to add in to it i will tell you guys as well um when i get there but i don't do any cardio i do like well i don't do i don't not do any i do two days a week of 15 minutes i actually did not get to any of my cardio this week yet i'm hoping to do one today you guys are going to see me work out today uh, which is Sunday, so you'll see that at the end. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hoping to get to that cardio session today. I usually do two sessions of 15 minutes. I just like haven't, like the stairs have been taken or um, we ran out of time and like we just didn't get to it this week. So that's not going to be in there. Hopefully today it will, but besides that, it probably won't. Um, so yeah, I think that is pretty much all I have to update you guys on. If you want to know about like how to create your own workout split and how I create mine, I did just do a post over on my Instagram page. So if you're not following me there, go follow me. I'll leave my handle right here on the screen. So if you're curious about that or uh, just any like tips, tricks with nutrition, workouts, fitness in general, your fitness journey and stuff like that, um, definitely go give me a follow on Instagram. I post a lot over there. I also do post my workouts a lot on my Instagram page as well. Um, but yeah, let's get into this full week of workouts. Hi guys, we're at the gym. Oh my gosh, this thing keeps moving. Um, I forgot to mention in my intro that we work out normally at, do you wanna say hi? Hello. <laughs> We work out normally at like 5 a.m., 5.30, it's been lately, um, which is why I didn't like film a ton in the mornings, um, like introing the mornings and stuff, but I'll do that when I'm like talking through everything. And then Wednesdays are our rest days, and I mentioned before we're on like a six day um, split right now, but if we need an extra rest day, obviously we'll take it, but usually we're pretty good with like six days um and then there was one more thing i forgot to mention but i can't remember Steak. oh no huh? um so wednesday is our rest day um and saturdays and sundays obviously we don't work out at uh 5 a.m we work out normally around like 10 i guess ish kind of um and then i just wanted to say our split so we don't necessarily work out together every day we work out most days together okay I had to move because there's someone in the car right there so anyway we don't work out every day together but we work out most days like most of the time so uh, our splits are like a tiny bit different but it's like mainly the same muscle group um, for the most part so Mondays I hit chest and shoulders Tuesdays I hit hamstrings and glutes Wednesdays is a rest day uh, Thursdays are a little weird for me it's kind of like a mixture of stuff so i kind of hit like posterior um so i hit glutes back and a little bit of abs um and then friday i hit shoulders and arms saturdays quads and glutes and sunday is back and abs so i have a back and abs day today so we're gonna go in and do that i think i recorded my warm-up for leg days on like saturday so i'll show you guys my warm-up it's the same for every like lower body day and i didn't record my upper body warm-up yet so i'll try to do that today in the gym so you guys can see that as well um 
And I think that's it. Oh, I forgot to mention quickly what my like focus is. So like I told you guys about my Instagram post that I made about like how to choose your workout. And a big part of that is like what your focuses are. So right now I'm in a building phase. So I am trying to grow. Um, but I don't want to like build too much more in like my upper body. I'm still going to push really hard on my upper body, but my main focus is to just grow my glutes a little bit more. Not even really my legs that much because I feel like they're pretty built up, but um, you can always have a bigger butt. So <laughs> that's kind of my goal. Um, and then when I cut down, obviously, um, like more towards the summer, I will uh be able to reveal those goals better so yeah um so that's kind of my focus which is why i'm hitting glutes three days a week and legs two days a week and then everything else i'm kind of hitting um evenly for like upper body so yeah that's pretty much it so we're gonna go work out back in abs and i'll show you guys hopefully the warm-up and then the workout as well Okay guys, so we are getting into my Monday workout here. I did warm up before these sets, but I did not record it for you guys. I unfortunately did not get a upper body warm up in the whole time um, that I went through my workout. So I apologize for that, but you will see a lower body warm up um, later on in the week. So my Monday started with a chest and shoulder workout. I am actually testing my maxes this week, so you will see one reps for a lot of my compound movements as you see here. So this is the bench press. I went through about eight different sets of one or very low reps um, to test for my max. So you'll be seeing me hitting one rep here. For the bench press, you want to make sure that you're keeping your core tight, feet, butt, and shoulder blades on the ground. I do arch my back to make sure that I lock my shoulders into a very safe position and I'm using a spotter here my boyfriend just to make sure that I am completely safe and spotted during the movement and just in case I um fail like you're seeing right here I was not able to get the weight up so I had to have a spot for that but I got 140 on bench which I'm super excited about for my one rep max Okay, going into the next movement is a dumbbell overhead press. So you guys will see that here. Um, this is hitting my shoulders. So this is a compound movement for my shoulders. I'm hitting chest and shoulders today, like I said. So I do one compound movement for each one. Okay, moving into my first superset, you guys will see that I'm doing a dumbbell incline press. So this is hitting the upper chest area and the uh, pectoralis minor, um, which is a different part of the chest muscle. And then I'm supersetting this movement with one of my favorite shoulder exercises, which is lateral raises. I love this movement. Some uh, common tips and cues for lateral raises are to keep a slight bend in your elbows to make sure your shoulder uh, blades and your rotator cuffs are safe and to also not pass your shoulder level when coming up with the weight. And you can see I'm struggling quite a bit. I'm pretty uh, maxed out there after maxing with my uh, bench press and then going right into shoulder presses. This is my next superset. So I am doing chest flies. I do like uh, switching these up from cables to machines uh, once in a while. Sometimes I do them with dumbbells as well. Today I picked to do that on the machine. I do really like the machine. Just make sure you have it at the correct height for you. So you can see my arms are straight across and my hands aren't higher or lower than my shoulders. So that's a good thing to watch out for for that. And I actually have a really good superset um, that I like to do on chest and shoulder days with the pec machine fly. I just turn around on that same machine and I do uh, rear delt flies. So rear delts are the back part of your shoulder. Your shoulder is made up of three muscles. So you have the front delt, the mid delt, and the rear delt. Here I'm hitting the rear delt. So you will adjust the machine to come all the way in and then you're going to be pulling back. Okay guys, it is now Tuesday morning. Like I said, I work out super early. So testing my maxes this early this week was a little rough, um, but it wasn't, wasn't the worst thing ever. So you'll see here, I'm starting with sumo deadlifts. I did test my max on these this day. So you'll see me work up in each of these. 
sumo deadlifts are a very good exercise to work the lower body. So basically it's going to work the glutes, the hamstrings, a little bit of the lower back, a little bit of the core. It will possibly work a little bit of the quads as well. But it's super important to figure out the right stance for you during this lift. Um, it definitely is a tough lift to like get your stance down with because it's very individualized. So my stance that works for me is going to be based off my body mechanics. So my hips, my knees, my ankles and how my lower body and my legs are set up and how I move, how much mobility and flexibility I have and everything like that. So mine won't be super, super similar to yours, but everyone's will be able to like focus on the same cues and stuff. So for very common like cues for the sumo deadlift are things like making sure your toes are pointed slightly outward during this movement so that your knees follow the direction of your toes and you don't like block your the bar from coming up with your knees at all because they're like in. You always want to make sure those are going out. You also want to take a wide stance which is why it's called a sumo deadlift because we're taking wider stances here. And then you also want to make sure you're sitting back. So you'll see when I start the movements, you'll see my hips sitting back more. Um, moving on to my next exercise, this is the barbell stiff leg deadlift. So this is very similar to a barbell RDL stiff leg deadlifts. The difference is that stiff leg deadlifts come all the way down to the ground. So you'll see I'm touching the ground during each movement here. This is a very, very uh, highly hamstring focused exercise. Has a little bit of glutes in it as well. And this is one of my favorite exercises for sure um, because it just hits the hamstrings so well. And you definitely wanna pick a good weight for you. If you're doing too much weight, you could definitely feel it in your lower back, especially if form is compromised and we do not want that for this movement. I did superset those with standing banded abduction abduction hits when you're standing hits the upper glute area which can be really really um, beneficial just to build strength there for other movements and then i moved on for my next superset i am doing glute focus back extension so you'll see i grabbed a weight so i am doing as many reps as i can with weight in my hand and then I'm going to drop the weight and I am going to just perform as many reps until I feel burnt out during that exercise without the weight in my hands. This is a really, really good one for the glutes and for the hamstrings, but I am minimizing the hamstring um, in this movement by only coming up a little bit of the way. So you can see I'm doing like a 45 degree range here and that makes it more glute focused for me. And then I did move on to superset that exercise with single leg and you can see I'm going off the box single leg sprinter hip thrust. It's called a sprinter hip thrust because my other leg that's coming up in the air is coming up on a 90 degree angle. This exercise is meant to be powerful, quick, fast. So you see I'm not using weight here because I am already feeling it a ton in my glutes and my hamstrings. So as long as you're pushing through that heel that is on the ground, you will definitely feel it in uh, those areas. And you also wanna make sure the box that you're using aligns with your hip and your knees. You can see the box is a tiny, tiny bit lower than I would normally use. So it still works really well. In my next superset, I started off with a single leg RDL. I am using the little bar on that machine there to assist in the movement so I could get the most out of focusing on my hamstring and glute contraction for this movement. Um, if you have tried this movement before, I'm sure you guys know it's a little bit more advanced. So if you're not all the way there yet and confident in keeping those hips level and having all that balance while you're doing it and you want to take a little bit of the thinking out of it, I do recommend holding on to something with the opposite hand. Um, you do want to keep those hips level and not let them turn out, which is a big uh, or common mistake that I see in this movement a lot, which is... Uh, why I am using an assisted uh, thing here for this one particular movement, um, but I do recommend practicing both. Okay, guys, it is now Thursday. Wednesdays are my rest days, so you guys just saw Tuesday's workout. 
we are on to Thursday's workout now. Thursday's workout is a little bit different. I think I talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but today I hit glutes, back, and core. So it's a little bit of a mixture of a ton of things, um, but mainly posterior. I have my glutes and my back in there and then just added a little bit of abs in as well because you always want to make sure you're strengthening your core. Um, so I start out with hip thrusts. I am maxing out on hip thrusts on this day too. So you guys will see a lot of lower reps again. And when I do talk about like maxing out, I don't max out often. I think this is the first time I've maxed out on my um, compound lifts in probably a couple of years. So I don't do this often, but I wanted to kind of see where I was at. Um, so I can again test it maybe in six months. I would test like once every six months or even once every year um, For me because I don't really like focus on powerlifting or anything like that I just wanted to see where my strength was at So you guys can see I am already worked up in weight for the hip thrust I am hip thrusting off of the bench, but I'm on top of like a two inch platform here and that's because the bench is a little bit too high for me so you can see when I'm at the top here my hips and my knees are level and that's what you want when you're hip thrusting to get the most out of the glute and hamstring contraction there. So that was the last set of my hip thrust and I now moved on to a back exercise so I am doing a lat pull down. These are my favorite back exercises. I love this exercise to death. Um, it's a really good one for your lats. Lats are also, um, the longer name for them is latissimus dorsis. Uh, you have two, they're huge muscles on your back. They run pretty much from like your shoulder blades all the way down to like where your ribs end kind of. Um, so they're a huge, huge muscle. Very important to work up the strength there. So you can see I'm going through that movement. And then I did superset this with a glute exercise. So I am doing cable rope pull throughs and these are mainly focused on the glutes and hamstrings. You can make it more glute focused by not coming too far down in the movement. I am hitting a little bit of hamstrings in this, but it's mainly glutes. Make sure to give it a good squeeze at the top. Make sure your arms aren't doing any work here. So you can see my arms are completely straight and they're just pressed up against my body the whole time. So I'm not pulling with the rope from my arms at all. The next superset I went into is straight arm lat pull down. So you can see I have the attachment all the way at the top here to make sure I get full range of motion. So my arms are coming up all the way as far as I can go. And then I'm pulling down with straight arms, which is making sure that I'm not hitting my triceps in this exercise, but I am hitting my lats. And I go ahead and move on to a cable crunch, which is the superset here. So I am doing a cable crunch here, which I love. I love these exercises. Um, very strength focused for abs, um, but it definitely works very, very well. You can also turn around and do this the opposite way. I just like to do it this way because I find it more comfortable this way, but do whichever feels best for you. I'm holding the rope right next to my ears and I'm not really pulling with my arms at all. I'm making sure to get a good crunch in when I'm coming down. So my back is rounding a little bit. And then I'm coming up, keeping the core tight the entire time. So these are cable crunches. If you haven't tried them out before, highly recommend. And moving on to my last superset. These two are really good ones. These are mainly for abs. Um, I am doing a hanging. So these are also called like Roman, Roman chairs. Um, but I'm doing a single leg, straight leg lift. Um, here so I'm doing single leg just to break it down a little bit more so I could really focus on that contraction with each um, leg coming up so you'll see those there and these are um, going to focus more so on like the lower abs in uh, that movement and then I'm moving on to more of a like core stabilization exercise so these are called dead bugs I'm not sure if you guys have heard of these before but these are a really really good movement for core stabilization, which we also need not just like strengthening exercises for abs, but also core stabilization is super, super important for a lot of things. So you'll see I start in a tabletop position. So you can see right here is where that position starts. And then I'm going to drop opposite arm and opposite leg at the same time. But the key is to keep your back on the ground flat against the ground the entire time. 
All right, guys, we are on Friday. So this is day five. Um, and this is a shoulder and arm day. I'm actually really excited about this day because I didn't have arms like really focused in on my workouts too much before. Um, but I don't like to do arms alone. So pairing it with shoulders was perfect for me. I don't usually go for like um, maxes with overhead press, but I did kind of just want to see where I was at like weight wise, I wasn't going to push it too far past where I was struggling. So you will see me max out here for one rep, but I probably could have pushed it more. I just didn't want to um, just to stay safe. I have been having a little bit of like a neck issue lately. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't like doing too much where I was going to hurt myself accidentally or anything here. Um, super important to warm up with the bar like you guys just saw in that last video um, here because the bar is 45 pounds, which is not um, light for an overhead press. So um, you do want to make sure that you're warming up good before this. Um, going ahead and starting on my second set like you guys are seeing now I added just little fives on the sides of each and I'm working my way up I'm going to stick with lower reps because I am maxing out I know these plates look big but they're only 10 pounds so I am now lifting 65 pounds so just getting the movement down so I think I'm going to go for three reps here um, nope, three to five, I think. Um, but yeah, just warming up still, this movement does focus highly on the shoulders and that mid delt there, um, which can be super important to like build up, especially if you're going like for physique goals, um, your shoulders really give you like a V taper to your waist. So if you guys ever want to like build that shape more, um, an hourglass shape, you really want to build up like the shoulders, the glutes and the back and stuff like that to create that like uh, hourglass figure. So yeah, you can see that's my rep, one rep max right there. I didn't test past that because I wanted to make sure I was just staying safe. And moving on to my first superset after my compound lift, you guys can see I'm doing cable single arm lateral raises and I'm actually leaning a little bit. So the slight lean that I'm doing really helps me focus and get more range of motion on the mid delt there. So I'm stretching it past my body. You can see I started right in the middle there. So when I lean, I'm getting more range there and it's helping me focus a little bit more on that mid delt. So doing these and switching them up once in a while with cables can be super, super helpful. And doing single arm obviously just helps you focus on that muscle a little bit more than doing two arms at once. And with that exercise, I did single arm tricep kickbacks with the cables. Um, you've probably seen a lot of people doing these with dumbbells. Um, doing it with the cables is just another variation. So you want to make sure that elbow is staying in the same exact spot each rep you do. You don't want to let it swing forward too much or anything like that. You want to make sure you're really squeezing the tricep at the top of this exercise as well. And then moving on to my next superset, I am doing cable face pulls. These are one of my favorite exercises. So a key for this is to turn your hands in on the rope and have your thumbs pointing at you. And you really want to pull towards your eyes or your forehead to make sure you're really hitting that rear delt in this exercise. And I supersetted this exercise with tricep overhead extensions. I'm doing these on the cables because I was just there. You can also do these with a dumbbell. Um, but again, you want to keep the elbows in the same exact spot um, during every single rep and just extend those arms and really focus on that tricep squeeze. And my next superset is going to start off with Arnold presses. So you guys can see Arnold presses are super similar to regular uh, overhead presses with dumbbells, except you're rotating into the front in an Arnold press. So this kind of rounds out the shoulders, make sure you're hitting all those um, heads of the delts there. And then I am super setting with um, skull crushers. So this is a really good exercise, one of my favorites for triceps for sure. So you're gonna lay back on the bench um, like you would for a press and you're going to extend your arms above your head and you again you want to keep your elbows in the same exact spot the entire time when hitting any tricep exercise coming on to my next superset i am doing alternating front raises i like to do alternating because i feel like if i do both 
arms at the same time and I'm using heavier weights, it's easier for me to like swing my body without trying to, um, which is why I am kind of like breaking it down, focusing on one arm at a time. But you want to lift that weight up right to about shoulder level in front of you and really take any of the swinging or bouncing out of that movement. And I supersetted those front raises with easy bar curls. So if you guys don't know what an easy bar is, it's what I'm holding right now. It's just a barbell, but it's not straight across. It's kind of like curved a little bit. Um, and this works really well for gripping for bicep curls. So I'm doing um, about 20 bicep curls here just to kind of burn out my biceps a little bit. And I think I completed two sets of both of those. All the other ones were three sets. Um, so two sets of these just to kind of like burn out a little bit um, with shoulders and biceps. And then coming into my next superset, and I think this is my last superset, I'm doing rear delt flies with dumbbells. And I'm doing them on an incline bench just to set that like height up for my um, rear delt flies and make sure I'm really hitting those rear delts in there. And I supersetted this exercise with alternating dumbbell curls heavy. So I went pretty heavy here. Um, I'm doing about six reps on each arm. So I grabbed like 25s or 30s. Um, to do that with and really just like burn out my biceps and get the most out of that um, lift there like I did with the easy bar curls. So a cue for bicep curls is you're always going to want your elbow to stay relatively in the same spot there. Okay guys, it is Saturday. Yay, I am so happy on Saturdays because I get to sleep in a little bit, have a little bit more energy. So you can see here I'm uh, showing you guys my warm up for leg days. This is the same warm up I do on every single leg day, whether it's glutes, hamstrings, quads, or whatever it is. I want to make sure my whole lower body and even full body is just super warmed up. So I just did toe grabs. So those are stretching out the front of your legs, the quads. And now I am going into uh, knee hugs. And those are going to stretch out the glutes, the hamstrings, and just really make sure that like you're feeling uh, warmed up in those areas. So I kind of just start out with those two simple ones. I do walk during all these movements just to make it more of a dynamic thing. You could stand in one place and do this, but you really want to focus on more like dynamic movements during your warm ups. And I moved on to hip openers. So you can see I'm coming up and out with my knee. Um, on each leg all the way down and now I'm doing hamstring swoops So I'm taking my hands and I'm just swooping right by my foot You can see my front foot is just a tiny bit in front heels down toe is up just to get that extra stretch in the hamstrings there and All the way down all the way back just like the same thing I was doing before and then I moved on to leg swing So this is just to open up my hips a little bit. So I'll go front back front and then land on the ground and switch to the next leg so all the way down for that and then on the way back I did switch over to high kicks I do high kicks um mainly because like I'm pretty flexible in general if you're not flexible obviously don't kick up that high just to make sure you're staying safe and then I moved on to squats just body weight squats to get my hips um, knees and ankles kind of like warmed up good and then I move on to a squat flow after that this squat flow is like insanely good if you have not tried it before I highly recommend so I'm just gonna push my hips back like an RDL bring my elbows to my knees and then I'm gonna bring my hips down at the bottom so elbows to knees hips down and when I'm down I will push my knees out and then I'm doing another like froggy type squat flow here um, hands stay on the ground and this is something if you're super flexible you should try um, but if you're not it might be a little bit more uh, hard for you there now I'm going through an RDL motion dynamic warm-ups are things that kind of like mimic your motions or your exercises and movements that you're gonna do during your actual workout so RDLs are a big one that I do just to get that hip hinge movement down so highly recommend doing those if you don't have those in your plan right now. And I'm going into world's greatest stretch. So you can see I walk my hands out, bring one leg up and replace that hand with the leg. 
and then I go about five times up all the way and then back down and then I'll switch legs here up and then back down and I'll go through that five times and that is a full body warm up that's a really really good one which is why it's called world's greatest stretch um, so again if you don't have that in your split highly recommend and I'm going into downward dog stretching out those hamstrings right into cobra stretching out those ab muscles um, there and then I'll go back and forth between that about three to five times depending on how like stiff I'm feeling um, that day and this is again a full body stretch and I'm going to go into cat cow here so this is cow where you bring your um, butt to your head pretty much and then you go into cat where you round more and you again you try to bring uh, your butt to your head the other direction I'm going into T-spine rotations here. I'm in the quadruped position, which is both hands and knees on the ground, taking one elbow, touching down to the ground, coming up to the side, and then repeating that. Highly recommend this stretch as well. Again, it's like a full body type stretch, but focusing more on the thoracic section of the spine. Okay, guys, I'm coming into a lunge type thing here. So I'm stretching out the hamstrings in this position. And in this position, I'm stretching out the hip flexor on the opposite leg. So this is a really, really good stretch. And a lot of like runners do this stretch to kind of like warm up that hip joint and stuff um, and those legs. So highly recommend this. I do about three to five on each side. So you're going to set up your knee and your shin so that it's kind of like parallel. So when you're in this position here, you want your knee and your foot to be in line and you're going to lean forward as much as possible. And then you're going to lean all the way back, try to straighten out that front leg for that motion um, in the back there. And that's going to allow you to get a good hamstring stretch right there. All right, guys, that is the extent of my warm up that day. And then I'll just add in other things I need if I feel like I'm super tight somewhere or if I have to foam roll or anything like that. So today we are moving on to squats. I actually tested my squat max the week before this. It was the Sunday before I recorded uh, this full week of workouts. So I'm not testing my squat max today. I believe I stuck with a five by five on this day. Um, so you'll see me warming up. I think I have 25s on the side. I did warm up with the bar and then 10s. Um, I just didn't record it. Those were 25s. I moved on to 45s. And I think I stuck with 45s for my five by five. So I'm lifting 135 pounds here. Um, so yeah, just making sure obviously everyone's form is different for squats again, because of your biomechanics, but just making sure like you have some of the common cues and tips that you're always focusing on. And this five by five guys was hard that day. I was like about to get my period. Um, so any like workouts, um, before or during my period are very, very tough because your hormones change, your energy dips. So like those, uh, workouts are definitely going to be a little bit harder. If you guys haven't noticed that yet, um, definitely something to look out for here. I am doing Bulgarian split squats. I'm doing glute focus. So you can see, I place my back foot on the bench and I lean slightly forward with my torso. And that allows me to put more emphasis on my glute in the, on the front foot side. So the foot that is on the ground, that glute is getting most of the emphasis in this movement. And you want to make sure you're pushing through the heels on that front foot always and keeping that core tight. I did not superset that exercise because it was hard enough. Um, and then this is my first superset of that workout. So I did reverse lunges. I think we did three sets of eight uh, per leg here. Um, so you can see I'm stepping back. My front leg, uh, the knee and the heel are always aligned there. I never want them too far back or forward um, just to make sure I'm putting emphasis on the quad still and not um, any other part of my legs here. This is also a tough one um, for me in general. <laughs> I feel like quad exercises are a little bit more uh, tough for me, um, but obviously work through everything, um, keep pushing and keep challenging yourself. And then with that exercise, the reverse lunges, I did uh, the abduction machine. So I went for a three for 25 reps. Um, and I picked a good weight where I would like fail around, uh, 25 reps or really, really feel like close to failure around those 25 reps. Um, it's important to have variety, especially with abduction exercises, because some of our abductor muscles respond really 
well to higher reps so even doing like a hundred um of these would be really good um but switching it up once in a while using that variety of reps with these exercises are going to be really good for you okay this next superset and i think this is my last superset here um i did leg extensions so you'll see i am moving with both feet here um bringing it all the way up so my legs are straight and really squeezing my quads at the top i think i did about three sets of 15 here and then i did also superset this with another quad exercise you guys are gonna see in a second i did goblet squats so holding that kettlebell right against my chest there and just performing a squat movement puts more emphasis on the quads and also the glutes as well making sure you're pushing through the heels sitting back keeping that core tight and i believe i went through three sets of 15 um for both of these exercises in this super set as well all right guys it is sunday the last day of workouts like i said i work out six times a week um, sometimes I work out five times. It just depends on if I'm feeling like I need an extra rest day. I just really listen to my body for that. Um, so this is my first exercise of this day. I have back and abs today. So I did barbell bent over rows and you can see I'm doing that here. And then I went and moved on to, um, pull-ups. So I did an assisted machine because I usually do them with a band, but I forgot my band that day so I just went on to do it on the like assisted machine I was not feeling unassisted pull-ups that day at all so I needed to do assisted um, they were actually pretty tough for me this is another really good compound exercise for back day if you aren't doing pull-ups they can be super beneficial um, so highly recommend doing those um, and yeah I think I just did about three sets of 10 there and then I moved on to my first superset of this day. I did seated cable rows. I apologize for the light. It's impossible to find lighting in this gym for some reason. Um, but yeah, I'm just pulling that bar attachment um, to my lower stomach area, pulling those elbows back and on an angle to really target my back here. And then I supersetted that with cable lap pull downs you guys know I love my pull downs like I said so pulling that bar down to your upper chest really pulling through the elbows here and making sure those elbows are aligned with your upper back is super important um, to get the most out of this movement and to minimize any like swinging or momentum that could be going on here um, would also be super important during this exercise as well and then moving on to my second superset, I started off with straight arm pull downs, which you guys saw on my other back day. These exercises are staples for me, things that I do on every single back day because I love them so much. I feel um, a really good connection to that muscle um, during these movements, so I keep those in. Um, no matter what so that is going to be in here on all my back days for sure again keeping those arms straight and pushing those hips back to get full range of motion is super important for street arm pull downs and then you guys saw the same exact superset on my last back day but it's such a good one I did cable crunches again so just going more into this, keeping that rope um, right next to your ears and really making sure you're pulling with your torso and your abs instead of pulling anything down with your arms. So those should stay static the whole time. Making sure your lower body is also pretty static the whole time. You can see my hips are moving a tiny bit um, to crunch down, but not much. And then I go ahead and move on to my third superset, which is single arm dumbbell rows so you're going to want one leg and one hand the same side on the bench and the same other side off of the bench and that arm off the bench will be rowing that dumbbell and you want to really pull with your elbow pull back with your elbow you don't want to pull like inward or um forward or anything like that during this movement you really want to pull back in uh out kind of like with your elbow um keep your core tight keep your head neutral during this movement and again you saw me switch sides um so I switched legs on the bench as well 
and I supersetted this movement with alternating knee tucks. Um, this is like a modified single leg V up type thing. Um, this is a really good one for core as well. So always keeping one leg out during this movement and one leg getting tucked in. As you tuck your leg in, you're going to want to, um, with the assistance of your hands, crunch your core in as well. And then I just finished off with some planks. So I planked for three sets of 30 seconds. So you guys will see um, one of these here. So for planks, you want to have your elbows right below your shoulders. You want to make sure that your hands are straight forward. You can see I just corrected myself there. I had them together a little bit, but you want to make sure they're straight forward to take off any um, compromising there and then you want to really make sure your core is super tight your glutes are tight um, just so there's no arching or rounding or anything like that in the back hi guys okay I hope you guys enjoyed my little week of workouts I did just um, change my workout split to what you guys just saw so I'm gonna be doing that for a while I do like it a lot so it might be a little bit longer but I'll do week of workouts every once in a while um, my exercises that I do every like day for back day or for leg day or whatever it is are different. I make them up uh, the day before I go. Um, but I do obviously focus on progressive overload and make sure that my I'm still like able to like push and challenge myself and progress in each uh, exercise each lift so a lot of them are similar but maybe not in the same order maybe not the same reps sets volume um, intensity stuff like that so I do change them up every once in a while so I'll definitely do another one of uh, these videos if you guys liked it uh, in the future for sure I know this is a bit of a longer video because it's a full week of workouts um, and I wanted to explain everything to you guys um, but I hope you enjoyed it if you did definitely leave a comment let me know so I know what you guys like to see and what you guys don't like to see um, definitely leave a question too in the comments if you have any questions about my workout or anything like that Give me a follow over on Instagram if you guys want to see more um, workouts, tips, nutrition, everything like that. Um, I do post a ton over there, um, so definitely give that a uh, look if you guys are interested in that. And don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.